Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a quintic equation. But before that, I want to announce something else. And yes, I made a new channel, A plus BI, completely dedicated to complex numbers. I hope you enjoyed this. Please let me know. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. It's called A plus BI. Hope to see you there. Let's get back to our quintic now. So we're going to solve this quintic equation, 16x to the fifth plus 31x equals 16. Can we use the quintic formula? No, because it does not exist. Unfortunately, we have a quadratic formula, we have a cubic formula, we even have a quartic formula, which is quite complicated, by the way. You can look it up, and I believe there is a picture on Wikipedia, which is super duper wide. It's big. Anyways, if the quintic formula existed, it would probably be extremely complicated and you would probably need an encyclopedia to fit it. Anyways, this is a quintic equation and I kind of try to make it a little harder to guess because I know if I gave you something that has an integer solution, then you would immediately guess that. And I know some of you guessed this one too, but hold on to your thoughts. Definitely save your guess and let's see how this goes. So. We can't use the quintic formula, so we can kind of do something else. One of the methods is guess and check, but what am I going to guess? Is that going to be an integer? I already told you this is not an integer. Now you can quickly tell, right, if you just plug in like 1 and negative 1, 2 and negative 2, so on and so forth, you're going to notice it's not going to work. One thing that might be helpful is RRT. What is RRT? Rational Root Theorem, right? So we can go ahead and do the following. We can go ahead and put 16 on the left and then look at the coefficients the constant and the leading coefficient of course we kind of need to pay attention to two things here this one and this one the minus sign doesn't really matter because we're going to consider both the plus and minus versions but to keep a long story short you're going to have to check a lot of combinations plus minus one you're going to have to check plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 4, plus minus 8, plus minus 16, and then you're going to have to divide this by plus minus 1, plus minus 2, same thing, plus minus 4, plus minus 8, and plus minus 16. Look at all these combos. Obviously, there are some repeats, like 2 over 4 and 1 half are the same thing, but think about it, there's going to be, that's going to be quite an adventure, don't you think? So we're going to do something different. You can do it, definitely. I mean, at some point, you're going to find a solution. But here's what I'd like to do. I want to turn this equation into a monic. What is a monic? The leading coefficient is 1. Because in that case, we, can, we have a better chance of using the RRT. You'll see how this you know, unfolds in a little bit. So here's what I'm going to do. x to the fifth is a perfect fifth power, but 16 isn't. But 2 times 16 is 32, and 32 is 2 to the 5th power. You see what I see? Awesome. So let's go ahead and multiply both sides by 2. That's going to give us 32x to the 5th plus 62x minus 32 equals 0. Awesome. Now here's what we're going to do. Since 32 is a 5th power, x to the 5th is a 5th pith, pith, power, we can go ahead and write this as 2x to the fifth power, the fifth power of a product. And then following the same plan, we can just write this as 31 times 2x and put the 2x in parentheses. And then use substitution. This is what's going to make our polynomial monic. So let's go ahead and call this something. How about t? So this is going to be t to the fifth plus 31t minus 32. And yes, hopefully you get to remember what I talked about before several times, the first thing you check in a polynomial equation, no matter what the degree is, the sum of the coefficients. If the sum of the coefficients is 0, which is 1 plus 31 minus 32, by the way, then this means what? This means 1 is a solution. So t equals 1 is a solution because if you plug it in, it gives you this, which is 0. Make sense? Okay, hopefully it does. So since we know that t equals 1 is a solution, by factor theorem, we can safely say that t minus 1 is a factor. And that's awesome because that'll allow us to 
factor this expression. So I'm going to go ahead and manipulate this expression in different ways. I want to show you the alternatives. Start with this. And I know t minus 1 is a factor. So I'm going to go ahead and write it as follows. Ready? This is going to be fun. t to the fifth minus t to the fourth plus t to the fourth minus t cubed plus t cubed minus t squared plus t squared minus t plus I need to get 31t so I'm going to add 32t and finish up with minus 32 and guess what everything checks out awesome now we're going to do factoring by grouping right okay great so since we know t minus 1 is a factor we were able to break it down like this obviously this is very laborious time consuming whatever but it works Anyways, let's just go ahead and take out common factors. This is t squared. This is t. That's a really long expression, by the way. And then we're going to take out t minus 1. And the other factor is going to be a good one. t to the fourth plus t cubed plus t squared plus t plus 32. And the whole thing is equal to 0. Awesome. What are we going to do with this? We're going to solve it, but we already know t equals 1. What about the other quartic, right? Well, we're going to take a look at it. And let me just tell you, though, this expression has no real roots. How do I know that? You'll see in a little bit. No, oh, no real solutions. Okay? You'll see in a little bit why. So I could break this down alternatively like this, right? Obviously. I could just write it this way t to the fifth notice that 31 is 1 less than 32 so I could just break down at t and that would mean adding 32 t look at how much we save by doing this right look at that and look at this and then of course it doesn't work in all scenarios but it works this time and then this is equal to 0 now we can go ahead and factor by grouping again but this time I get something like this t times t to the fourth minus 1 plus 32 times t minus 1. And then again, this is factorable by uh, dif difference of two squares. It's going to be t plus 1, t minus 1, which gives us t squared minus 1, and then times t squared plus 1, that gives us t to the fourth minus 1, plus 32 times t minus 1. And now t minus 1 out, and you're going to get something like before. Same thing. Because you got to distribute, uh, because if you don't, I mean, it doesn't matter. You don't have to, but uh, that is not um, that doesn't have real solutions now why doesn't this have real roots let me tell you that because this equation this quintic has only one real solution let me tell you why so set f of x equal to 16x to the fifth plus 31x remember this is the left hand side and then differentiate f this is going to give you 80x to the fourth plus 31 notice that this is a positive or non-negative and this sum is going to be greater than 0 for all x values. And this means f of x is always increasing. Since our function is always increasing, it's going to intersect a constant at a single point. That means there's going to be a single real solution. One intersection, one real solution. We already found it. There's no reason to be beat a dead horse, right? That basically finishes up this problem. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out A plus BI. And bye-bye.